All right, truth tables. Got one behind me here. And they, it's going to be a tool that we're going to use uh, for deciding or looking at how these AND and OR operators work in conjunction with NOT and some of the different results that we can get when things evaluate differently this way. This is not something you need to memorize, but you do need to understand it, and you should be able to build this for the AP exam if you were simply given the initial states. So I wouldn't memorize this, definitely do not memorize this, but it's something that you need to understand where the results are coming from. So let's take a look at it. So this is our truth table. So our truth table has a couple of initial states. So A and B, these are the initial states. So if we set A to true, false, true, and false, and not A, of course, would flip that, right? Not true is false, and not false is true. And same thing with B. So we're going to see what the combinations of these two and also the knots will do in our truth table. So if we look at A and B, A and B in this case, right, we're going to be looking at a, an initial state of true or true. And recall that as long as one side of the true, or one side of the or is true, then it will evaluate true. So we can see that in all three of these cases where we have uh, false and true, true and false, those are going to be, uh, those are going to evaluate to true. And then only on our bottom one here, this is the only place where we get false because we have a false in both the A and B column. Let's take a look at the AND column. So in the AND column, we see that we have essentially the inverse. Only the top row here is true because A and B both have to be true in their initial states in order for this entire expression to evaluate to true. And as we go down the line, looking at the initial states of A and B, each of those, one of them is at least, at least one of them is false all the way down the columns here. So when we look in the A and B column, we're going to get falses all the way through there as well. Now it gets a little bit trickier when we put the not in front of it. The not in front of it flips the relationship for our ands. It doesn't flip the relationship of A and B, though. So it's only going to change the relationship of where the trues and falses sit. But we have to uh, flip our, uh, our nots. So really interesting one here is to look at the relationship real quick between not A and B and not A or not B. Those are the same outcomes. These give us the same outcomes compared uh, to this, which is, I think, really interesting. And another really interesting relationship is actually this relationship here, where we have uh, A and B, A or B, I'm sorry, is the same as not, not A and not B. Not, not A and not B. Not A and not B, not. Uh, really interesting relationship there where flipping the nots and the ands give us different results. So if we think about this, let's think about not A and not B really quick. What's the result of that? Well, not A is false, so... Let's do this here. So we're going to have false. I'm going to do this all in one color because I don't want to keep reaching all over the screen. So we have false and what? False and B is false. False and false is 
false and false is not false, which gives us true. And we see that we can run all the way down the line and do that until we get true and true, which is true, not true is false, and we finally get false at the end. So this is how a truth table gives us uh, an ability to look at all of the possible outcomes from combinations of A and B, and when we're trying to build our code, we can think in these terms, A's and B's, nots and ands and ors, in order to get a truth table, or a, essentially we'd work in one column, right, because we're only going to be able to build one of these in our code, but get the kinds of outputs that we need in order for our code to actually control what we want to control. Uh, so, for example, when we were talking earlier about how uh, we might want to try to find a number in a range, we could find that number in a range in several different ways using uh, ors and using ands and nots in order to get the outcome that we want because we're able to flip the relationships. If you go back to the uh, video about Boolean operators, you'll notice that I flipped the signs in my Boolean operators when we did the example about trying to find a number outside of the range of 10 and 20. That's actually the equivalent of doing this. By flipping those signs, I did the nots, right? So I was able to create the same truth table of A or B by flipping those signs, the greater than or equals to sign, and then putting the not in front of it. And that's what allowed me to use two different techniques for finding a range or finding an exclusive range. Uh, and we can do the same thing in reverse if we need to. Okay, so that is truth tables, a way to evaluate and look at how our relationships of nots, ands, and ors give us different outcomes uh, based on certain initial states of A and B. Truth tables can actually get really big. We can add a C, a D, uh, and a few other uh, things in there that can make this really fun. These can get really long. These statements can get really, really, really long and complex, and we'll talk about some other things that make it uh, a little bit more challenging and also a little bit more simple. All right, I will see you guys in the next one.